morning. This is Eugene May, the minister and teacher of Eagle's Wings Ministries, located in Dover, Florida, in the United States of America. I want to welcome you to the channel today as we continue speaking on the subject of adding to your faith. Peter spoke these words in 2 Peter chapter 1, and he says, and add to your faith. In 2 Peter chapter 1, Peter actually says some things to us that's very astounding. He says we have the same kind of faith that he and the other disciples of Jesus had from the beginning. And that's amazing to me that he actually said that. But that's true because faith was a gift that God had given us. And that gift is working within us even today. At this very moment, that faith is alive within our hearts. And I trust that your faith is growing. But Peter comes into 1 Peter or 2 Peter chapter 1, and he comes to verse 5, and he says, But also for this very reason, give all diligence to add to your faith. Add to your faith. Virtue. And then he says, knowledge. And he goes on from knowledge in verse 9 to self-control. And then he says unto self-control, perseverance. We've talked about those four particular items that he wants us to add to our faith over the last couple of weeks. But today I want to talk about number five. He uses this word, godliness. He says to perseverance add godliness. Let me ask a question. What is godliness? Now, most often when I'm teaching, I like to ask questions, and sometimes I even give opportunity for people to reply and, and, and answer the questions. And I will stop and I will say, what are the characteristics of God? Now, why do I say that? Why am I talking about the characteristics of God? Because the word godliness is not speaking so much of our actions, of our moral excellence, which Peter has already talked about when he said and add to your faith virtue. He's not repeating himself. He is talking about the characteristics of God. Let me ask you this question. Do you have the character of God in your life? And you say, well, that's impossible. I, I cannot be like God. And yet the scripture tells us that we are to be like God. In the book of Romans chapter 8, the word talks about us being conformed to the image of his son. And what does it mean to be conformed? It means that we are going to be like him. And that is not impossible for you and I who are believers in Jesus Christ and who have received Jesus Christ not only as Savior, but as our Holy Spirit baptizer. Because you see, it's the Holy Spirit that is going to do the work within us to cause us to be able to be like Jesus, literally to be like God, because godliness speaks of that. So I want to talk about being a godly person today, a God-like person. Now, what does it mean? What does it mean to be like God? Let me ask this question. Fill in the blank. God is. I know that most of us are going to respond with this word, God is love. Yes, he is. He is love. Some will say, well, God is great. Well, he's great. We might go on with many, many other words, but I believe that I've discovered one particular word that really describes the character of God. You see, in this particular passage that we're speaking of over these several weeks, he's going to talk about love in the next verse. 
he's going to say that we add to our faith brotherly kindness, which is a type of love. And then love itself, coming from the word agape, which is a self-sacrificing love. And so again, he's not repeating himself. And when he says to us that we're going to add to our faith godliness or the character of God, what is he speaking of? In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, there is a scripture that is so, so important for us to understand the character of God. In Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9, the writer simply says to us, Therefore know that the Lord your God, he is God, the faithful God, who keeps covenant and mercy to a thousand generations with those who love him and keep his commandments. He calls him the faithful God. Faithfulness, for me, is the number one characteristic of God. He is faithful. He is faithful to do and to accomplish everything that he has promised. You see, that is what he is looking for also in us. One of the things that I have noticed over my lifetime is that true believers want to be faithful to their God. They want to be faithful to their God. What does that mean? That means that you stand by what you say. You do what you say. And God wants us to understand that that is his nature. It's faithfulness. In the, the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 1, we come to the end of the cha of the first part of the chapter, not the chapter itself, but the first part of the chapter. And he says that he has given us these promises, all of these wonderful, wonderful promises. But he says that they are yes, and they are amen. They are yes, because God says yes to his promises. He keeps his promises. And they are amen, meaning that if, when we agree, and in fact, in fact, that's what the word amen really means. It means that we agree. We say, so be it. And when we agree with what God has said, and when we agree with the promises of God, then it is to the glory of God, and God will actually do the things that he has promised. Now, God wants us to understand that. He wants us to be able to rely upon his faithfulness. Now, his faithfulness doesn't change simply because someone doesn't believe. In Romans chapter 3 and verse 3, it literally says to us something that is just amazing to me. It says, what if some do not believe or did not believe? Let me read it to you. He says, for what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? No. It doesn't change God because we don't believe or because we don't remain faithful. God remains faithful. And, and that's amazing to me. God is not changed by how we act or react to what he says doesn't change him. He's still God. He is still the faithful God, and he wants us to understand that. Now, let me share a little illustration with you that blessed me many, many years ago. I was uh, attending a meeting. You see, I may be having meetings around the world, which I normally do, but I attend meetings too. I go and I get blessed. And I was listening to a pastor named John Bassanio. He was a pastor of Dale City uh, Baptist Church in Dale City, Oklahoma. And uh, he was sharing about his little girl. He said one day, and he had an office at home like I do here. And uh, he said one day my little daughter came running into my office. And she said, Daddy, would you build me a playhouse? 
And he said, I was busy studying, had my Bible open, reading. And he said, I said, yes. Not really thinking about the consequences. And he said, she left my office and went about her business and I went about mine. But all of a sudden, I, I looked out of the window into the yard, into the garden. And I saw my daughter go past the window carrying her dolls, carrying her toys. And uh, I wonder, what in the world is she doing? And he said, I got up and went out and I said to her, honey, what are you doing carrying your dolls and your, and your toys out here into the yard? And she said, dad, you promised to build me a playhouse. And he said, you know, I realized then what she had asked. I realized that she was expecting me to do what I said because I wanted to be a faithful father. And so I got in my vehicle and I went to the hardware store, to the lumber company, and I bought the material and I went home and I built her a playhouse. He was a faithful father to do what he said. And that's just a simple illustration that we can ex expand a thousand or a million or a billion times about our God. Because he is the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy with those who love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. I want to encourage you today. We have a loving, faithful God. And you see, when we speak here in 2 Peter chapter 1 concerning the godliness that he wants us to add to our lives, he is simply saying to us, I want you to be like me. I want you to be faithful. Oh, all of those other things are true about God too. But let me propose something to you today. If God was not faithful, his love could end. If God was not faithful, this world could end. If God is not faithful, and you could add whatever you desire in there to say it would come to an end. But since he is the faithful God, his love will never end. Since he is the faithful God, this world will not end until he's through with it. And everything else that we may have thought of when I asked the question, everything we thought of will not end until God says it's the end. And God wants you to understand that, that that is a characteristic that he is looking for in your life and in mine. I want to give a story about my father. My father was a faithful man, meaning, yes, he was faithful to my mother. He was faithful to our family. He was faithful to do the things that he promised to do. But I remember in 1949, this was a couple of years ago, I was just a small boy. We built a house. Built a house out on the farm in Arkansas. My father didn't go to the bank. My father borrowed some money to build the house, yes. But he borrowed it from a neighbor. And I remember the day that he would, went to this neighbor's house. And this neighbor was quite wealthy. And this neighbor had a habit of helping the farmers put in crops, helping the farmers uh, with uh, projects that they had on their farms. And, and one of the things that she didn't do, she didn't charge interest. And uh, so my dad took me by the hand and led me into her house. He was a, a widow. And uh, she counted out to him $5,000. This was amazing. $5,000 in 1949 was a lot of money. And we left there on a handshake. My father extended his hand. She extended hers. They shook. They shook their hands, and that was it. Everything was set. 
the next year after the crops were in and everything was finished. My dad went back and counted out $5,000. He took me with him. You see, he was wanting to make an impression upon me. And he paid that money back. And I've never forgotten that. And when I have given my word for something, I want to do it. Do you see, this is the faithfulness of God. And so Peter says, and add to your faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, and, and patience, long-suffering, all of those things. But he says this. He says, and godliness. Godliness to me is faithfulness. Let me ask you a question. Are you faithful? Are you a faithful man or woman of God? Are you a faithful child of God? Because you see, when we want to be godly, he says, I want you to be like me. I want to bring this to a close, but I want to encourage you. Take the word. Let the word be applied to your life. And watch God change you and develop you into the person that he desires you for you to be. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you today that we are like you. Yes, we're adding to our faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience. Yes, and even godliness into our lives. In Jesus' name. I want to encourage you that if you like these times that we have together, go and say you like it. Also, we post this to YouTube, and if you'll go and, and you'll subscribe to Eugene May on YouTube, uh, that will help us immensely. God bless you today. Have a great day. Have a great week. And we'll see you next week finishing talking about these characteristics that we add to our faith.